wait for a couple of people to get on here. Let's see if we can get some people on here. A live feed isn't a live feed unless you got people yakking at you. Oh, we got one person. Good afternoon, Jennifer. How you doing? Oh, we got two people. All right. So we're we're filling up here. Um, so I know most of you, I know most of you all know that uh, uh, some of us were found guilty up here in Oregon. Um, I can only speak on my behalf and how I feel uh, about that. Um, I will say this: uh, my spirit is still as big as a mustard seed, and. Uh, with that being said, if I tell a mountain to move, it will move. Um, so I wanted to do this video. Uh, I wanted to do this video to thank all of our supporters. Uh, thank all of you for your hard work. Uh, for all of us political prisoners, um, those of us that are incarcerated, and those of us that are out on pretrial release, we thank all of you for your hard work and your efforts. Um, so moving forward, uh, moving forward with uh, jury verdicts and that, um, you know, got dealt, got dealt a hard blow. I mean, you know, we, we put our faith, we put our faith in our, in our jury and, you know, we, we wanted our jury to, to see through the corruption and unfortunately I think that the jury was stacked against us um, and the reason why I say it was stacked against us is because uh, we had 400 jurors from the Eastern District of Oregon that were automatically cut out um, that were already are cut out of our jury pool we were slated for four panels of juries each panel being um, 16, I think it's about 16 uh, jurors per panel. Uh, one of our panels got cut out completely. Um, so we just ended up with three panels. Uh, most of our jurors came from uh, Western Oregon. Uh, all the Eastern jury pool and stuff got, got kicked out. But um, I'm making this video because I know there's a lot of you out there uh, that support all of us. And I, like I said, I can only speak for me personally. Um, all the help that you guys are doing for all of us, uh, that you that you all have done for me, um, is greatly appreciated. Um, as far as sentencing goes, uh, sentencing uh, for me, my sentencing guidelines is uh, my maximum is up to 15 years. Um, you know, I'm gonna. Pray hard about it. Pray hard about it, and hope uh, hope that I don't get stuck with the 15 years. But from what I understand, uh, the prosecutors are trying to push for the maximum. So, um, and that's just the felony charges. That doesn't that doesn't include the the misdemeanor charges. Um, but I'm very I'm very principled. I'm I'm very happy with my decision of not. Uh, of not taking those plea agreements. Uh, I know there's been a lot of people uh, talking about some of the other people that were taking plea agreements. Um, they all had their own reasons why uh, they took their plea agreements. We don't hate them. We still love them. Uh, they're our brothers, our sisters. Uh, there's, there's no reason to pass judgment on anybody. Everybody has their own reason as to why they can or they can't. Me personally, um, Lavoie Finnicum was my uh, major deciding factor in not taking my plea agreements. That coupled with the Constitution and the people, uh, and also knowing that if if I was to take a plea agreement, um, I wouldn't be standing uh, standing tall as I am right now. I I still I still feel like I'm standing tall. You know they can't. They can't take my sunshine from me. <laughs> at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, 
you know, they, they, they can't hold me back. Because uh, my faith is as big as a mustard seed. And um, I, want that, I want that to be an inspiration to all of you. I want all of you to see that. I want, I want that to be uh, something that helps give you drive. I want someone to look at this and be like, well, you know, it was because of you that I did this. I think I posted that before, and I meant what I said. I don't just, you know, I'm a man of my word. Um, and, you know, I try, I try, I can. Um, unfortunately for our justice system, uh, our justice system is still corrupt. Uh, and, <laughs> um, you know, I think that's apparent now. I think... Uh, going through all the trials that has exposed a lot of stuff, uh, especially especially here in Oregon. Uh, Oregon uh, is has just been a hell of a ride so far um, with regards to the trial. Um, and like I said, there's still there's still a lot more to go, and I uh, still got a long road ahead. Um, when they were reading, they were reading the the verdicts, right? And um, I had both my I had both my Bibles with me. I carry I carry a New King James with me that I actually got from Multnomah, and uh, I carry the Mormon Bible. Uh, I was presented that Bible uh, from Brian Bundy. He presented that to me, and it means it means a lot to me. That Bible does, but. Um, I had both of them in my hand when they were reading off the <laughs> when they were reading off the verdicts and um I had my fingers on the on the Mormon Bible in such a way it says it says another testament of Jesus Christ on there, right? Another testament of Jesus Christ. I'm gonna pull it out for you guys, I'm gonna show you what I saw. Let's see if I can find it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, but, I'm just, I'm, you know what, these aren't sad tears, these are, these are happy tears, because the happy tears means that you have to do something like this, you know, I mean, Jason Patrick said it right, he said, he said, you know, at the end of the day, only one of us really needs to be found convicted of anything, because then that would give us grounds for an appeal, but you know what? We got four chances for an appeal. Even better, right? Even better. Uh, so let me. So as far as when I was holding, I was holding the Book of Mormon, and I was holding my other Bible. On. I'll show. I'll show both of you guys right now. So here's my New King James version. I got this from Multnomah, and here's. The Book of Mormon that I received from uh, Ryan Bundy, and uh, when I was holding on to these two Bibles right here, I had one thumb covering one side over here, and I, I didn't pay any attention to this. One thumb was covering one side, and one thumb was basically on the other side. So I, my grip, my grip was literally like this. I don't know if you guys can read that. Okay, I was holding on to my my Bible just like this when they were reading off the verdicts, and I I looked down, I looked down at my Bibles, and what I saw was, you know, it was just amazing. It's like, uh, you know, he's with us. I know he's with us. He's shown me time and time again that he's with us. So I looked down, and it says, another test of Jesus Christ. If you take the A N out of another and you take the am ent out of testament it says other test of jesus christ and you know what one person a person could be completely saddened by the whole entire situation i mean it was there was there was a lot i mean you can feel the atmosphere in the courtroom but that right there that gave me a second wind. That just billowed. It 
billowed my sails. It gave me a second wind. It gave me a push. And, you know, uh, I know he's with us. I know he's with us. Um, he was with us in Multnomah uh, doing the 82 days uh, d during the Inverness day when I was in Inverness. Uh, it's in the outskirts of Portland. Uh, he showed me. He showed me that he was there with us, and he is all. He is. He is constantly there with all of us. Um, in Inverness, there was a situation um, where we were doing prayer circles, and this is just a personal testimony I'm going to share with you guys. Um, we were doing prayer circles, and uh, I was leading the prayer circle. The one guy uh, that led the prayer circles. He uh, he ended up getting sent up state and sent up state to Oregon, and um, so I ended up stepping, filling, filling his shoes. So um, I stepped in and and uh, we started doing prayer circles in the morning when we would do a prayer circle. Um, we would always go over the material. We would always go over the material uh, that we would do the day before or either the night of so uh we went over some material and there was a gentleman he was um he was a middle eastern gentleman and uh he he knows how to read sanskrit okay so sanskrit is uh it's basically like it's the ancient language it's one of the ancient languages in the world because you're essentially you're speaking in tongues when you're reading Sanskrit, and this gentleman, he had, um, he had a, a, a Bible. It was a New Testament. Or I think it was an old, New Old Testament, in his language, Middle Eastern language. I mean, you know, it's like, it's like calligraphy. I mean, you really can't read it, but you know, when we we're thumbing through those pages, he was reading some stuff. I was reading some stuff, we were on the same page, and it was awesome. I'm just saying. So, we were going over, we were going over a, a certain passage, and this was when we were in, when I was in Inverness, all of us, there was a couple of us guys there in Inverness, and uh, we were going over a passage, it's Ecclesiastes 3, 1, a time, right? So I asked this gentleman, I said, hey, uh, I think his name was Dave. And you know what? I'm mean, here's another funny thing. His favorite part, his favorite book in the big book, his favorite book in the big book was Psalms. And we know what Psalms is. The Psalm of David. So David, I had David uh kind of go over his his book and see if he can look up Ecclesiastes three a time to, right? Well uh while I was in there we had members from the mail group uh, mailing us letters. So that day, like, you know, it was still in the morning. Mel hadn't uh, come in yet. And uh, that day, that afternoon, so we were going over that passage that afternoon, uh, I had re received this card, this card from this, um, from this gal uh, from Florida, okay? And I didn't think anything of it. Like, I opened up the, I couldn't open it, it was already open, but I pulled a card out, I looked into this, I looked at this card, and sure enough, uh, the passage that we were going uh, to do, either the, the day of, or, you know, the next day, I think, I think we did it that day, I opened up this card, and it says, actually on the front of it, it says, the Lord's timing is perfect, right? goosebumps. You open up the card, on the inside of the card it says Ecclesiastes 3. It's the same passage that we were going over, right? Blew my mind. I'm like, what is this? We were just going over this passage and here's this card, you know? Uh, so, I'm just, I'm filled with joy right now. I'm filled with joy. You can't kill my spirit. You can't take my spirit from me. At the end of the day, you cannot take my spirit from me because I love the Lord. I love what he's doing for me. And you know what? He is real. He's very much real. He's a part of our lives. 
all of us. It doesn't matter who you are. He loves everybody. So, so going over that card, going over that card, uh, you know, I had to, I had to go show David. I mean, I had to go show David. And I was like, David, I was like, dude, I was like, look at this card. Look at this card. I showed David. His face turned white. His jaw dropped. And he was like, wow. Okay, are you kidding me? Are you serious? Now, let's get to the better part. The better part of this testimony is this, okay? That night, the night that we were going to do our bid, I was going to, I actually had him turn that Ecclesiastes 3 into his tongue, and he can convert that into his own language, into a song, right? They do that. That's a, such a beautiful thing about that language is they can convert text into song. Now check this out. We all go out to the basketball court, okay? We all go out to the basketball court, and uh, I'm like, all right. I'm like, David, I was like, are you ready? He said, we're ready. There was only about seven of us out there in the courtyard, okay? And just to give you an idea what the courtyard courtyard is it's you know obviously it's a cement wall right but up top the reason why we went out to the courtyard uh, up top it was open so there was a grate up top to where you can get fresh air you can you know walk around you can you know if the sun was shining just right if if you know if you're in just right in this one corner of the courtyard you can feel the sun on your face but that night Okay, that night when we did our prayer circle, uh, we all bowed our heads. We all gathered, you know, shoulder to shoulder, arm to arm, pulled into our circle. David starts singing, okay? He starts singing, and he's singing in his tongue. He's singing in his tongue. He's singing this passage, Ecclesiastes uh, Ecclesiastes, uh, no, it was Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8, he's singing this, okay, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Now, can you picture him singing this in his own language? When he started on this very, very first sentence in this passage, this very, very first sentence, we're all out in the basketball court, the doors closed, okay? When he started singing this in his tongue, the door to the basketball court opened. It opened itself very slowly very steady let me give you an idea what what's on this door it has some hardware on it it has hardware on it that keeps the door from opening and closing okay the door opens and it stays open wide enough to where somebody can walk through now mind you mind you there's still a lot of people and it's considered a dorm there's still a lot of people in the dorm. They're doing their own activities. It's towards the end of the night. That's when we did our prayer circle. But the whole entire time he was reading this passage, the whole entire time he was reading this passage, the door stayed open just enough to where somebody could walk through it. When he got done, the door slowly closed, very gently latched, and we began to pray. It was such a beautiful sight to be seen. During all that, 
I was tapping on shoulders. I said, hey guys, I said, hey guys, you got to witness this. you got to look at what's happening right now. This is such a beautiful thing. You have to look at what's happening right now. And they all turned and they looked and their faces are just bewildered in amazement. The Lord is real. He's shown not only himself to me, to a lot of other people, and I'm not the only one he's probably shown himself to. But I just thought I'd share that with you guys and uh, share that with you guys and, you know, so you can see, so you can see that they haven't broken my spirit. They haven't, they haven't broken me and they won't break me. They can give me 15 years, but they won't break me. I won't let them. He won't let them. He's number one. Only God can judge me at the end of the day. No man, no person, nobody can judge me. Only God can judge me. But, I love you guys. Uh, part of the reason why I wanted to do this video is to show my support for all of the supporters out there uh, and say thank you. Thank you for all of your, your, your efforts. Uh, thank you for everything that you're doing for all of us because at the end of the day, it, it helps a lot. It helps. And um, I really... Uh, you guys, you know, keep up the good work. And, you know, it's because of all of you, you're, you're keeping us all in good spirits. If you see, uh, if you see somebody just going off the hook or just venting, everybody's voice to their own opinion. I mean, you know, let them rant, let them rave. Don't, don't take it personal. Don't let it get to you. Um, you know, I don't want to sound like a hypocrite. I'm, you know, uh, I let some things get to me at times, you know, I'm not perfect and neither are you, neither are we, we're human beings, we learn, uh, you know, just don't let the petty stuff get to you, you know, it's don't, don't let them divide you, because if they divide you, they win, they think that they won with the guilty verdicts, but they haven't won, you know, I would much rather lie and be guilty and lie and take innocence. I get to appeal. I get to appeal. And when I get to appeal, oh boy, that's going to be fun. But the only way I can appeal, the only way I can appeal is if, uh, if and when I get sentenced. So when I get my sentencing, if I get sentenced, I can appeal. And, um, hopefully I am plan on seeing this thing all the way through. All the way through. But, I love you guys. It's getting late here in the afternoon. I gotta get some lunch. Uh, get something to eat. I'm kinda running on autopilot mode right now. I just thought I'd share a few things, uh, with all you. And, and, uh, share a little testimony with you, uh, that I experienced in, uh, Inverness. But... I hope you all enjoy and, uh, and send in love and prayers to, to all of you. And uh, thank you very much for watching. All right.